Make Tortwell your study buddy to learn anytime, anywhere without carrying a load of books with you. Sign up now and get a free trial. Dentin is a hard tissue that makes up the bulk and general form of the tooth. If we were to take a cross section of a tooth, the dentin would be the thick layer right beneath the enamel on the crown and beneath the cementum on the roots. Now, What's interesting about dentin is that it's filled with tiny tubes or tubules that run throughout its thickness. These tubules are crucial because they contain processes of specialized cells known as odontoblasts. Let me break it down further. Odontoblasts are the cells responsible for producing dentin. These cells have their main bodies lined up along the pulpal surface of the dentin, which is the inner part of the tooth where the nerve and blood supply are found. However, even though the cell bodies of odontoblasts are located in the pulp, they extend long processes into the tubules within the dentin. This is why odontoblasts are considered cells of the dentin. They are actively involved in its formation and maintenance. Think of it this way. The odontoblasts are like workers stationed outside a building but sending their tools and materials through tubes into the building to construct and repair it. They produce both the dentin and the processes that extend into the dentin, making it a living tissue with active cellular processes. Dentin begins to form just slightly before enamel, which is the outermost layer of the tooth. Because of this timing, dentin essentially shapes the overall form of the tooth, including the cusps, ridges, and the roots. It's like the framework that defines the final structure of a building before the outer walls are put up. Dentin and bone are both hard and have a lot in common, but there are some important differences. In bone, some cells, known as osteoblasts, stay on the surface of the bone. When these cells get stuck in the bone material they make, we call them osteocytes. But with dentin, it's different. The main part of the odontoblast stays outside of the dentin. They don't get stuck in the dentin. Instead, they stretch long parts of themselves into the dentin tubes, keeping their connection to the main part of the cell. Even though they're different, both dentin and bone are considered living tissues because they have living cells and active processes. All right, let's dive deeper into the properties and composition of dentin. First, let's talk about the color and texture of dentin. In young people, dentin usually looks light yellow. But as we get older, this dentin tends to get darker. Enamel is really hard and brittle, which means it can break easily. But dentin has a property called viscoelasticity. This means it can change shape a little bit, which gives the tooth some flexibility. Dentin is harder than bone, but not as hard as enamel, and its hardness can change a bit between different types of teeth and between the crown and root dentin. Usually, the dentin in the middle of the tooth is harder than the dentin near the pulp or the outer edges. Primary teeth have dentin that's a bit softer than the dentin in permanent teeth. The amount of minerals in dentin also affects how it acts. Dentin has fewer minerals than enamel, which makes it more radiolucent or darker on radiographs. Dentin is made up of about 35% organic material and water, and 65% inorganic material. Let's break down the organic component of dentin first. The living part of dentin is mostly made up of collagen fibers, mainly type 1 collagen. These fibers are stuck in a base of mucopolysaccharides, which are also called proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans. Some important proteoglycans in dentin are chondroitin sulfates, dacorin, and biglycan. Dentin also has important glycoproteins like dentin coeloprotein, osteonectin, and osteopontin, as well as phosphoproteins like dentin phosphoprotein. What's interesting is that DSP and DPP are only found in dentin, not in bone.
Denton also has a bunch of growth factors that are super important for its mineralization. These include transforming growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, insulin-like growth factors, bone morphogenetic proteins, epidermal growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, placenta growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, and angiogenic growth factor. These parts play a big role in how dentin grows and stays healthy. The inorganic, meaning the non-living part of dentin is mostly made up of hydroxyapatite crystals. These are the same kind of crystals you'd find in bone, cementum, and enamel. But the crystals in dentin are a lot smaller than the ones in enamel, and they're shaped like little plates. Dentin also has a bit of phosphates, carbonates, and sulfates. Its crystals don't have a lot of calcium, but they do have a lot of carbon, especially compared to enamel. Here's something cool about dentin. It reacts differently to certain things like decalcification and incineration. If you decalcify dentin, the living parts stay the same and keep the shape of the dentin. That's why you can cut decalcified teeth and bones into thin slices to look at them under a microscope. But enamel, which is more than 90% mineral, disappears when it's decalcified. All right, let's recap. Dentin is a crucial hard tissue forming the bulk and shape of the tooth, situated beneath the enamel on the crown and the cementum on the roots. It is characterized by numerous tubules containing odontoblast processes, which originate from odontoblasts located along the pulpal surface. Unlike bone, where cells become embedded within the tissue, odontoblasts extend their processes into the dentin while remaining outside it. Dentin's viscoelasticity provides flexibility, making it less brittle than enamel but harder than bone. It is composed of 35% organic matter and water and 65% inorganic material, with collagen fibers and hydroxyapatite crystals being key components. Dentin also contains unique proteins like dentin coeloprotein and dentin phosphoprotein and various growth factors critical for its mineralization. Its lower mineral content compared to enamel makes it more radiolucent on radiographs. The structural and compositional properties of dentin allow it to retain its shape even after decalcification, unlike enamel, which is mostly mineral and disintegrates during this process.